We race on the B course at Happy Valley on Wednesday night. Welcome to the race by race preview featuring Paul Ladley selections along the way. Keep the red pen handy because there is a number of scratchings across the meeting and the first is in the first. It was a happy hood. It's now Hang's choice and Karis Teton takes the ride on the new number 12 horse. 6.40 the first race and Dragon Pride is on the class drop. Charming Steed missed a run on the 29th of May with a blood abnormality. Fortune President starts haven't been terrific. Double shows place two from four course and distance. The Royal Hour on a Wednesday night. He'll go forward and Ninja Derby. There was support for him on the all weather last time, but he's up to 15 starts now and has yet to hit the board, Paul. But Viva Alara, a speed map man's favourite. He does. He likes to lead, definitely. Uh, over. Doesn't matter what trip it is, but especially over the 1650. Charming Steeds missed that run, as you mentioned, but he goes forward. Smart Folks likes to go forward, but he could be trapped wide. Speedster should get a nice run just in behind the pace with the senior rider on. A double show hands choice. Superb Move likes to go forward. He's got a wide draw. He might just try and tuck in there because otherwise he could be in for a tough run. Charming Steed has been racing well. He was a winner two starts ago, Paul, on the All Weather. Followed that with a second placing here back on the turf. Speedstar runs seventh. He has run second at Chartin since. Yeah, I don't mind Speedstar because he's got a really good draw and he's going to—he's just going to get a nice run in behind. He won off a 40 rating Speedstar and he's down to the 34 rating now. So he's uh, he goes in. Also, Viva Allah, look, he's been so consistent, this horse. He just gets to the front and... You know, sometimes he hangs on, sometimes he doesn't. More than often he doesn't. I'm going to leave Charming Steed out just because he's had that, that issue. We're going to go back two starts, Paul, for Keen Unity because he's run over 2,200 metres since. This was the third two back. Hang's Choice fifth has been a one-hit wonder. And Master of Luck, he ends up finishing seventh in this race. Are you taking any of these three? Uh, Master of Luck, uh, I've got him in on a minor line here. Uh, he, he had to weave his way through and he didn't really get the clearest of runs and you can see him held up there so the race was over for him. Any sort of clear run I think he can uh, he can feature so he goes in on a minor line. Uh, Keen Unity I thought was just a little bit one paced here so I, I left him in, out, out in the end and Hank's choice so I think needs to improve a bit. We touched on Speedstar in the first replay. Here he is at Sha Tin last time. He had a perfect trip in behind the leader in this race. He was right in the market at 5.2. Draws nicely in three. Comes back to the valley. Uh, he's yet to run in the money over the 1650, but as you said earlier, he gets his opportunity to do that this week. Yeah, it maps really well from barrier number three. Uh, does a speed start. He's got um, Zach Purden jumping aboard here from that inside draw. A uh, well-rated horse. Uh, I think he'll get his opportunity. So I like the way he finished off strongly here. That is a good report. Uh, yeah. Second good report for Speedstar throughout the replays. He goes on top. Yeah, he is. I'm going to go with uh, Speedstar on top. I think he can uh, win from uh, Viva Alar from the front, Master of Luck. And I'm going to put Dragon Pride in there as well. Again, he's a downgrader, comes into Class 5s, one off this 40 rating in the past. 16-2-1. It's an early win for Purton and Hall for Paul in race number one. Race two and withdrawal number two. So the one is gone. E Legend Satanta on a seven day backup comes in for Luke Ferraris as the new toppy here for the Bellflower Handicap. And Satanta carries 129 pounds. Comet Splendido, a bit unlucky last time. Dragon Star, Karis Teton, good record aboard him. Courier Magic's won two from four track and distance. Joyful Prosperity has placed two from three course and distance. We've got uh, Cheetah Gold coming back in trip. An invincible missile ran on to run third at Sharpton last time over the 1400 metres. Dragon Star is the leader here, Paul, and he's had some wide draws lately. Not the case on Wednesday night. Yeah, so I think he can get to the front easy enough, and I thought Comet, uh, Comet Spendido can get that nice run just in behind. Uh, Golden Link should be able to get across now. Uh, Courier Magic, uh, Flying Phantom next. Thunderbolt Saurus B just had the one start. The rest get back. Satanta comes into the race, but with Barrier 9, I think he'll go back. Here is Satanta who comes into the field. Now, this is two starts ago for Satanta. Paul, this was a huge win, but he did have a really tough run last week. So a quick turnaround for him. And Dragon Star's had a very consistent season. Yeah, so look, Dragon Star, I think, can lead. So uh, from a low draw, he's going to get there with no issue. So he, he'll go in. Yeah, Satanta just worries me a bit with a seven-day backup. So I didn't put him in, in, in in the end. But it was a nice win from him. Uh, you can see Dragon Star, he's just honest as the day's long. He sure is. He's run another placing, which he's done 
with a couple of wins too throughout the season, but uh, placed in that race. Comet Splendido, you're going to make a case for him. This is him running third. This is uh, his most recent start, a couple of fourths before that. And Courier Magic has performed well, winning two of his last four. He's only a one-time winner this horse, but look, I think he's now down to the to a winning rating. Uh, his last win was off 69, he's off a rating of 55 currently, so he's in a bit of form and he didn't get the clearest of runs here, had to come off heels, so yeah, I think he's, uh, he's, gonna, he's definitely a winning chance. It is replay number two. Poor old Joyful Prosperity, he's a place punter's king, but he just can't quite get to the post in front. Mr Dapper, what about uh, him coming to Happy Valley for the first time? Yeah, from barrier 11 worries me a little bit with him. So a couple of things not in his favour uh, for uh, Mr Dapper. But uh, as you mentioned, Joyful Prosperity always runs an honest race. So look, he's going to go in for me on a minor line once again, Joyful Prosperity. Puts himself in the race once again, the grey, and you can see him finishing off uh, really nicely. So of the two, uh, definitely Joyful Prosperity, the one that goes in. He's uh, got a record of two and three over the grade. Two placings from three starts. Andrea Redzani takes the ride on him for Michael Cheng, but you've given away the fact you like Comet Splendido. I think he can sit on the back of Dragon Star's back, uh, Comet Splendido, and that could be the winning of the race. So lead trail scenario for me, two to beat four, Joyful Prosperity. I can put Invincible Missile in. He's getting to a good rating now, and he's coming back to uh, Happy Valley, and this is where his best runs have been. Two, four, eight, and 11. Comet Splendido gets his chance, that is Comet Splendido gets his chance to win his second race at start number 23. And the third race is over the distance of 1,800 metres here, and we've got Cordyceps 1 having his first try at the distance. He's won five over the 1650. Last start winners, Satirical Glory and Forever Glorious. Holy Power has his first try at 1,800 metres. Goldtack ran second at the distance three starts ago behind Flying Silver. Amazing Boy, a winner two starts ago in Class 5, and Nice Birdie's best form is either side of the 1800, the 1650, and the 22 around the valley. Cordyceps 1, Paul, he does have that early pace, but the extra 150 metres to try and stay for the first time. Yeah, exactly. He's got uh, apprentice claim, so he takes a bit of weight off his back as well. Holy Power can go forward. Satirical Glory, I think he'll eventually get across, but he just might have to work a little bit. There's a big run to the first bend, though. Uh, Forever Glorious should get a really nice run in behind. Nice birdie, precise express, won't be too far away. Forever Glorious has been really gutsy at his last two starts, Paul. He was just narrowly beaten two starts ago, and that was the race won by escape route, but he went down swinging, backed it up with the win over Gold Tack, and gets in with just an extra three kilos on his back. Yeah, so I think he, he can win again. He should get, a, get himself a nice run uh, just in behind. Gold Tack's been very consistent since he stepped up in distance as well. So I think these two horses can run the Quinella. Uh, they both uh, have been uh, very honest horses. They both finished off this uh, race here together and um, they're both going well at the moment. So yeah, I think both these two horses are going to run well. And there you go, there's your Quinella. We'll be playing placings only from here throughout the next replay. Satirical Glory was getting the job done last time at uh, Sha Tin, Barry number 11 this week, did win from nine at Sha Tin, but a good long run out of the first turn from the 1800 metre start. Yeah, so look, he, the, the key will be the first couple of hundred metres for him, if he can get in. And if he does get it, he just might have to work a little bit to get across. But it was a strong win here. He, he just ran away and won really nicely. Uh, as such, I'm going to put him in. I'll just put him in on a, on a very minor line, but he is a horse uh, going nicely uh, as well. The other horse, Me Time, I know you quite like him here, Mark, and he, he did run on nicely enough in this race as yeah, well. He needs to find a few lengths, but he was held up a couple of times in the straight there, so desperate for a long shot. He'll have to be for the, the one on uh, Wednesday night. Nice birdie, Paul. He's very hit and miss, but what of Holy Power, who has been back to the trials and kept on okay in that. He's coming to the 1800 metres for his first look. I think he's going to put himself on the pace, this horse, which I think will be a good thing in this contest. Uh, as, you, as you said, he's coming up in distance for the first time, but he, he finished off this race nicely enough. Uh, he's drawn barrier seven, so he should be able to slot in really well, and that's why I think he's, in, he's a chance. So he goes in on a minor line as well. But it's forever glorious to beat Gold Tack as the top two. Yeah, to beat Holy Power, to beat Satirical Glory. We've talked about all four of these horses. So yeah, three, eight, five, and two in the end with Forever Glorious on top and Gold Tack. Not much between the two of them, but just the way the barriers fall, I think Forever Glorious will get the better run. Uh, Holy Power and then Satirical Glory. Three, eight, five, two. That's a preview for race number three, first leg of the early treble. A 
race number four, and from the top four, the Dianthus handicap is Telecom Power on the class drop. Amazing Ace ran third at his first start for Beno Young. Sugar Ball was scratched on the 8th of May with a lame left four. Flying Roach only had the two starts. Mr Valiance had a quiet trial. It wasn't too long ago either was last week leading into uh, this race. Sweet Diamonds won his last two. Tattenham raced wide last time and stayed on. And Hero Star victory last time in Class 5 from where he was that night. Paul straight to the front on the speed map this week too. That's how he runs his best races. I think he's a sort of a one-dimensional horse, Hero Star. Might have to work a little bit from a wider draw, but I think he can cross Sweet Diamond. Uh, Flying Roach put himself right in his races in the last couple of starts. Golden Rise will get a nice run. Sugar Ball might just do it a bit tough. Amazing ace, spicy gold. Mr Valiant, he's led once, Mr Valiant, but didn't really work, so I can't see them leading with him. Sweet Diamond, a replay number one. Can this impressive form continue for him, Paul? He was a Class 5 winner two starts ago, jumped up into Class 4, and he won again second win in this grade, so he's proven twice at uh, Class 4. He is. So, um, look, he's still at sort of a rating where he could uh, possibly win. It's just whether he can do three in a row. He really got the race run to suit here and stayed on nicely and, and did win the race. But um, I think this is going to be a little bit tougher for him. OK, so it may end here. The two-run winning streak for Sweet Diamond. On we go to the next replay, which is Travel Golf 12th. And Tatnam stayed on. This was a big performance because he was wide. Time was pretty good. And uh, he's got Antoine Hemlin riding for Pierre Rung. On the negative, he's drawn 12. Yes, he's going to have to go back, I think. Uh, he'll need luck in the running uh, if he does come through. He's just a one-time winner from a 17 starts. So that was on a, a wet track as well with Tatnam. So, look, I'm just happy to watch him here. He, he is running well at the moment, but he'll need everything to go as well. That is Tatnam. Happy for all third last time, and this is a pretty strong race. Uh, the Wanabi has come out and won again since. Super Infinity also comes out of this race. He was beaten a bit of a distance by them, Paul, but plenty of horses are going to be beaten a good distance by these two. Yeah, they look nice, nice horses. Now, look, he went for the gap on the inside. You can see him in those green sleeves and yellow, and then the gap closed and he had to be snatched up, and his race was over right there. But look, he looked like he was going to run fifth or sixth. He, he sort of got back into the centre of the track, picked himself up, and to his credit, he ran on and he managed to pick third. So I think coming back to Happy Valley, one of 52, he's rated 50. I, th I think he can win this race. Yoda's choice in the red, who's on his outside if he does win, is running on Saturday at Shah Tin. And Spicy Gold made up a lot of late ground in this race as uh, Prime Mortar turns for home, and he was super impressive. They did run along, but he did run on. He did, and this was his first go at Happy Valley, so he's obviously showing a horse who's a little bit of a liking for the city course. Uh, he looked like he was going to go in, then he was going to go out. He finally came out and, and really stretched out and finished off the race nicely. So a really good run from him. He definitely goes in as well. That is a breakdown of the replays, but we've seen the winner amongst them, and it was the replay two back. Yeah, well, I like Happy For All coming to this, coming over to that strong uh, race. He's in form and he's a well-rated horse. Flying Roach only run, raced twice, but he's run well at both. I think he's going to put himself on the pace. Spicy Gold, we saw him running on strongly last time. And then Golden Rise is very consistent from barrier four. Six, five, nine and four. That is the preview for race number four. It's the first league of Wednesday nights, six up. Trophy race, race number five, good field this for the Ewo Challenge. And we've got a money catcher on the class drop, visor off, blinkers go back on. Moments in time comes out of Group 1 Racing. Flaming Rabbit first started Happy Valley. Alain Fillings won two from four course and distance. Chilchibi missed a run on the 5th of May with a leg issue. Lame left four he was. And Splendid Livings also had a lame left four. He's been off the scene since January. Lots, lots, lot of pace here, Paul. Yeah, look, over half the field likes to lead um, this race. It's the only three horses that don't. Helene Feeling, Jill Chibi, Mr. Sennessy. Any one of the others like can lead. Money Catchers led. Yellowfin led last time at Happy Valley and winning. Telecom Fighters, a seven-time winner, all from the front. Flaming Rabbit's gone forward in all his recent races. Outgate likes to lead. Moments in time has led over longer trips and Splendid Living is fresh up and he likes to lead as well so there's going to be pace I think. One man who'll be hoping they go like stinkers, Jerry Chow and he rides Chil Chibi. He's Jerry with Nick. Jerry, uh, really good class two on Wednesday night at Happy Valley. You're going to ride Chil Chibi who's returning to, to the track and you must be looking forward to getting on him again around the, the tight turns. 
yeah, really happy to get on him again. And last time just got a little problem, but after that it's fixed it. I trial him and get up him. He's feeling well now, and looking forward. I went back and look at that trial. I mean, for the majority of it, he didn't really look to be going anywhere particularly quickly, but that last little bit of the trial must have been quite impressive. Yeah, and he always trial just so so. He's, he's been so too much in the trial, and he's always did. And, and I think, but his form, I think, is, is being good now. Certainly has been. Um, let's just go back and, and sort of uh, wind our memories back to the four-year-old series. He ran in a couple of legs of that. I mean, he ran with plenty of credit, didn't he, really? I mean, he ran some really good races. Yeah, in a four-year-old series, he, he did a very good job. And, but he always got a little problem and, and could, could make him look upside down. And, 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 but now he's starting getting better again. And in the cast too, the... I think he got a competitive chance. He certainly does get competitive in the grade. His run when last seen, obviously I know he was withdrawn on his most in rec like recent engagement, but when he ran fourth that day, you didn't get much luck, Jerry, did you? I mean, he always had to travel that little bit wide, but he closed off strongly. Yeah, and he, the last time he went fourth, and the steepest free track, and we needed to come wide, and bit, it's difficult for him, but he's still running home very strongly. We know he loves it around Happy Valley, but again, the, the barrier has not been overly kind. You've got gate number 10, so what's sort of the plan in your mind to try and overcome that? I guess he doesn't necessarily go forward, does he? Yeah, because the, the pace, I think depend on the pace. But, and look, the pace, I think it will be strong, and I think good for him to just settle behind because he just off a, a, a few times and, and just swing quietly and then hope him run home strongly. That is Jerry on Chil Chibi. For you to look at in our replays here, Paul, and we do start at Happy Valley with Telecom Fighters in his favourite role, Outgate, Moments in Time Wider, and Mr. Ascendancy fourth the rail. So they end up finishing in the first four. The first four are home here. Yeah, look, I think Moments in Time will try and take a sit. And I think with all this pace in the race, there will be gaps opening up, and as such, he should be able to slot in. Uh, he does like it here at Happy Valley. He's been racing really well. He's a two-time winner from his four starts. And he did beat out Gabe Fair and Square in this uh, particular race. So, look, I, I think he's definitely a chance, and uh, he definitely goes in for me. He's one of the main chances, I think. Outgate's also in this replay upcoming, but Helene Feeling is one of those horses that you said in the speed map is going to go back, and if they fly along, he's going to be suited by the pace. Recent racing is at Sha Tin, record at Happy Valley is very good. Yeah, another one who's had four starts here for a couple of wins and then the two other minor placings he's finished in the top four. So, look, I, I think he can win this race. I think he'll get the conditions to suit. Uh, he, he finished it off OK here in this particular contest. Like the fact he's coming back to Happy Valley, I think that's the real key for this horse. And uh, Chang Chang Glory's been in really good form recently and just failed to win the group race the other day. By, beaten by a very good horse in Galaxy Patch. So as such, uh, he definitely goes in um, Helene feeling, and I think he can win it. Yellow Finn, he's been on the all-weather plenty of times this season, Paul, but he's a winner two starts ago, and it was over 1,650 metres at Happy Valley. He's always been versatile, but he's another one of these on-pace runners. Yeah, he is, and look, he led all the way, and he got the race run to suit, and he, he won nicely. So, look, he's a horse who's in good form uh, at the moment. He's going to sit, I think he'll sit just behind the pace, because Telecom Fighters, with the apprentice on, I think he's going to try and lead at all costs. And as such, he, he's, he might just have to sit behind, which I don't think it's a bad thing. Uh, romantic Lau's come out of that race and won, so it's, it's not, not a bad form race. It's a good field, this one. Who do you like? Yeah, he, he, definitely a good field. I'm going to go with Helene Feeling. I think he can bounce back and uh, win this with a race run to suit. Moments in time has been uh, in good form recently. Chil Chibi from the back and Yellowfin with in that trail. 6379. That's race number five. It's a quality first leg of the Triple Trio. Race number six is over the 1,000 metres. Another scratching here. Out goes Happy Horse. In comes a romantic novelist. And Luke Ferraris takes the ride on the new number 11. Mark Comet's won a trial since his last start. Fortune Worry has plenty of early pace. Happy Soul comes back in trip. Sergeant Pepper, three-time course and distance winner. Super Commander, four-time course and distance winner. Oversubscribe, he's a four-time course and distance winner. And Parents Love has been back to the trials twice since his last start. From barrier number nine. Uh, here, Paul. Fortune Warrior can pour it on. Super Commander likes to hike along too. 
he didn't he didn't go anywhere near the pace last time super commander which was unusual for him when he does jump we know he's a very speedy horse so look, I, I think um, you're going to take him on trust a bit that he does jump parents love him way too quick over 1200 last time so he's back to a thousand side happy's trolled really well up at uh, chung fei should get a nice run over subscribe likewise Speed sword from a wide drawer will go back. Now, Romantic Lovers comes into the race. He's back to 1,000 metres, so he, I just think he'll be looking for cover. If you look at in replay number one, this is Mark Comet's best performance since he's been here. He ran sick, and he's always trolled nicely since arriving in Hong Kong. Fortune Warrior is up outside the speed. The horse leading for home is Happy Horse, but he's no factor in the race now. And they're claiming again this week with Sergeant Pepper. Yeah, they are. Look, I'm, the one I will take out is Mark Comet. Um, you can see what I was talking about, um, Super Commander. He was quite poor in this race and drops out. He didn't get anywhere near. But uh, look, the, the gap, sort of a half gap opened and he, he went for it. I thought he was very brave and uh, almost won the race. He was just bombed late. So uh, I think Mark Comet is on the improve for sure. And that is the first replay. Second one's from Sha Tin, where Super Commander, this is more like Super mm. Commander, but uh, there is that concern that uh, he was disappointing at Happy Valley last time. Fancy Star's done nothing on race day, trolled up okay a few times, and Red Elegance, 1,000 metres, has been his best at Sha Tin. Yeah, it has. That's where his win was, um, Red Elegance. Has been placed a couple of times here at Happy Valley, though. Stayed on nicely. He'll need a bit of luck from his draw. He goes in on a very minor line, Red Elegance, going to put him in for fourth because, look, he, he did finish off this race nicely. He's trained by Douglas White. Matthew Chadwick takes the ride. He's having his first start over the 1,000 at Happy Valley. All of his racing there so far has been further. As opposed to oversubscribed, he's no stranger to racing over a 1,000 metres at Happy Valley. His good mate rides Alexi Bedell. He's a little hard to catch, though. He is. He comes into this race reasonably fresh as well, and he's been placed fresh a couple of times. Uh, he's drawn nicely in barrier three. There's a lot of pace in the race, which is good for him because he likes to come off a strong pace. So, look, yeah, I'm going to include oversubscribed uh, with that fresh record. He's been up to Chung Far, as you can see. A couple of trials up there. Went forward, drifted back, and then went forward again. He ran fifth in it. He ran second in the other trial behind a horse called Mighty Commander, who's scheduled to make his Hong Kong debut on the weekend. Paul, selections. Yeah, I'm going to go with the uh, seven uh, horse here on top. I think uh, he looks uh, ready to win his um, side happy. Just had the one start. Um, he drew barrier number one. He won that trial up at Chung Fa really nicely, I thought, so I think he's ready to win. Uh, the one Mark Comet, he goes in for second, oversubscribed, and then Red Elegance in there for fourth. 7193. It's the Karras Teton David Hayes combination for Paul for race number six. And race number seven now, and scratching pin again. Out goes winning Icy. In comes Man Ray Honor, who'll need to improve after his debut. We've got Nordic Dragon on the class drop at the top of the book. Five-time course and distance winner. Celestial Colours goes up a furlong in distance. Little Rising from Ashes returns to Happy Valley. Golden Empire's been back to the trial since second to Gracious Express. Amazing victory makes his Happy Valley debut. He trialled at the Valley in April of 2021. Super joy and fun are wide gate. Young Arrow's on debut in Hong Kong and California deeply. Back to 1,200 metres after trying further at Sha Tin last time, Paul. Golden Empire led last start, and I think he'll try and get across to that rail. A super joy and fun has drawn wide, so he might actually end up going on with it. Ace Victory's backing up for the weekend. He's another one that likes to go forward. Uh, Man Ray Honor comes into the race. Now, he led on his Hong Kong debut, but faded out. So I think you'd probably want to take some cover, but I'm sure they'll want to be positive from barrier one. Celestial Colours has gone back in his last two starts, but he's got an apprentice on this time. So I think they'll be a little bit more positive with him, and he did win from the front. Jerry Chow rides super joy and fun. Here's Nick. Jerry, you've got some nice rides coming up on Wednesday evening. Um, a number of them, the, the good, really good looking rides, are returning back to Happy Valley, which can suit. Uh, one of them is Super Joy and Fun, uh, who's won a couple now here at Happy Valley. You rode him at Sha Tin last time. Talk me through that run because he's finished fourth, but he, he was certainly not disgraced. Yeah, that one uh, I think is very good for him to learning because the first time Sha Tin and he, he got a good gait and he jumped, jumped well. And but the media session he be fighting, but I think first time uh, uh, the the horse normally sometimes we're doing that. But um, he, after that he settled down again, and he went home strongly, and and I think he won a very good race, and get the 
experience and then back to his home track and and but the draw is a bit difficult for him yeah yeah, I mean, you've got some nice rides, but you've got some horrible draws. Um, just on that run last time, Jerry, just watching it in the, sort of the, the, the latter part of the race, did he sort of object a little bit to the kickback? I mean, he just looked a little bit awkward. I mean, I know there had been a bit of rain around. Was he, was he just a bit sort of, you know, unsure about facing the kickback, potentially? I'm not sure about that, but it's definitely around the horse. He's a bit uh, shy and, and a bit scared. That's why he, he did a little bit head up. Um, coming back to Happy Valley, obviously, is going to suit. Um, he's made the running when winning. Is he a horse that necessarily has to lead? Um, I don't think so, because in the trial in Chongpa, he can he can run home strongly, staying behind. That's so why gate 12 a bit option for me. to If the pace goes strong, I can try to get inside the horse. And if the pace is slow, I can go in front. It's very flexible for him. Um, you mentioned that he's, he's probably still a little bit immature and obviously still just learning his craft. I mean, he's only had the, the four runs. Have you felt sort of with track work and the work that you've put in with him that he is getting there now with, with sort of day-by-day -day training? Um, he's getting there very slowly, I can say, and, and take time to, to make him grow. And, and he's still a bit immature now, but he start getting better and better slowly. Um, Benno Jung has put the, the cross nose band on. I'm not sure if you had any input into that. Uh, how do you think that will probably help him, do you think? Um, because track work, he always opened his mouth and didn't really settle. And I asked uh, Benno if he can put the cross low band on and try to keep his mouth uh, close and we run better. And the uh, result bit, uh, is, is good and he, he bit settled down in the track work. That's why we try to put on like, again. Yeah, wonderful insight, Jerry. And but you, overall, you've got some nice rides coming up Wednesday night, haven't you? Yeah, nice ride, but the draw a bit cheeky here. Yeah. Jerry Chow, just the four of them, but you can make a case for certainly three, if not all four. Paul on two, Golden Empire running second, Amazing Victory fifth. Poor Amazing Victory, gee, can find some bad luck. And California Deeply, 1,400 last time. This was 1,200. It's 1,200 on Wednesday night. What do we make a few of these? Yeah, look, California Deeply, he needs luck in the run because he gets back and he runs on, so he'll be doing that once again. Golden Empire, I thought might, they might push on for the lead because you can see he was still in front here with about 100 to go and uh, ended up just getting uh, pipped on the post. So a uh, good, good strong run from him. California Deeply doesn't look too far away. That's, they're not in, are they, those three? Uh, no. OK, on we go to Young Arrow. Now, the last one to appear from Singapore was Young Superstar for the racing club. Young Arrow also makes his debut for the racing club. They'll be hoping what Young Superstar did. Yeah, exactly. Now this horse has had the two trials. He's been slow away in both. He's finished off uh, strongly enough, 11, 21 pounds. I, I just prefer to watch him here on his debut though. With um, just He just seems to do a little few, a couple of things wrong at the, at the start. All right, so a bit risky over uh, the distance of 1,200 metres around the valley for the first time at perhaps Young Arrow. So he's not in. Golden Empire's not in, California Deeply's not in, Amazing Victory's not in, there's not many left. No, there isn't, is there? I'm going to make the long shot in this race, and he should be a decent price. There wasn't a video to show, so we couldn't show you one, but I'll explain why. Uh, Astrology's last one was of 85, he's down to 73. Now, they put blinkers on for the first time at um, Sha Tin, and he was out of the picture, he was last turning for home. He ran past uh, sort of a, a quarter of the field, ran on nice enough. Coming back now to Happy Valley with those blinkers for the first time, uh, the horse just seems to improve to me. So I think with a well-rated horse, they can be a dangerous in a real open field. So that's why I went with him on top, made in the long shot. Nordic Dragon, now he hit the line strongly at his last start. He's got Hugh Bowman in from Barrier 2. Super Joy and Final Need Luck from the draw. And Celestial Colours, I think, be a lot more positive with the apprentice claim on. 5, 1, 9 and 2. <laughs> Paul with Astrologer to win the first leg of the late treble on Wednesday night. Race number eight, the Violet Handicap coming up here, and it's a class three over the 1,000 metres. Good quality race, this one. Class drop for Humble Star. Magic control on debut for Jamie Richards was Acho Nacho, a listed and group three winner in Victoria prior to arriving. Far serve and Midori Glory clash again. Better draw for Heroic Master. We've got Youthful Spirits back in distance on a six-day backup in Telecom Speed. He has his best form in class four. Speaking of speed here, Paul, there's plenty of it in this too. Colourful Prince likes to lead, Fast Serve likes to lead, Harmony Fire likes to lead, Telecom Speed likes to go forward, Youthful Spirits led his last start but didn't work out well for him. 
Uh, Magic Control, uh, the first start, I think, will we'll try and take a sit. Uh, Midori Glory, now he was in the trail last time from Barrow 1, he's drawn 6, he just might be a little bit further back. Jamie Richards with two runners, including that horse Magic Control, and here's Jamie and Nick. Jamie, Magic Control is a newcomer for you in, in race number eight. Quite an intriguing looking horse. He had a, a pretty decent level of form in Australia. Yeah, he did. His uh, horse that uh, arrived up here was some good form in, in Melbourne, proper form. Um, and he seems to be, you know, acclimatising pretty quickly and, and uh, he's been trialling well. So um, hopefully he can do a good job for us there tomorrow night. Talking of those trials, went back through his record. He did have a trial around the valley. He was quite impressive in winning. Actually beat uh, beat Fast Serve, who, who reopposes in this. So the Happy Valley trial looked very good. Yeah, his uh, trial at the valley was very good. He, unfortunately, he hasn't had a lot of luck since he arrived here. His first trial, he, he got loose. Um, then he trialled well at the valley. And then in his next trial on the all weather, he lost both of his front shoes when he jumped out of the barrier. And we since sent him up to Chung Far and gave him a couple of quiet trials up there just to get his confidence back again. Um, and we feel as though he's in the, in the right sort of shape to head off to the races now. So um, he's drawn well, uh, Hugh knows him, um, looks to be plenty of pace on paper, so hopefully he can just get a nice run. It's never easy for the PPs to win first time out, but um, ho hopefully he can run a nice race for us. You've got the, the tongue tie on as well. What was the sort of thinking behind that? Was there any sort of issue through his trials and track work that sort of made you think, well, maybe he needs this? Not really, just one less excuse that the horses have got. Um, most of them wear, wear tongue ties, so uh, it's something pretty simple, you know, pretty pretty regular for the stable. And for those that probably aren't too au okay fait with sort of his Australian form, he listed winner, group three winner. He also won around Mooney Valley, so I know they're going the other way round, but in some respects that probably aids him in his cause to try and win at Happy Valley, doesn't it? Yeah, well, Mooney Valley is, as you say, the opposite direction, but it is a tight turning course. Um, he's not an overly big horse, uh, and he seems to have handled the valley well when he trialled there. So, uh, yeah, it's just, he's got good honest form down the, flight, uh, down the straight at Flemington as well. So there's plenty of options for him going forward, but we just thought this was a nice um, kick-off point for him. Yeah, 10 five, 3 pounds, I was going to ask you, has he been a, a, sort of a quick horse to, to come to hand, given his sort of size and stature? Yeah, he's uh, settled him pretty well. He's been eating well. Um, as I say, things didn't go sort of that smoothly for him. He's had a couple of little things that haven't been ideal, but um, we've given him the time and the owners uh, have been nice and patient and um, hopefully we can see him run well tomorrow night. Yeah, he certainly is an interesting horse on paper. And just um, your other runner, he's going to be joined by Happy United as well in the race. Obviously, he's a regular over these sort of trips. How's he? He's in, he's in good shape. Uh, he just had a quiet trial up at Chung Far after not racing very well down the straight here at Shart. And he's much more at home at, at the Valley, but he's drawn a uh, bad gait. So uh, he's going to need a bit of luck. He might be a, a horse that has another run or two, but uh, maybe next season for him might be more suitable. But he is getting back down close to his rating where he has been competitive before. Jamie on his two runners. Paul, we'll move on to Youthful Spirits. Now, he raced last week over the 1,200. This is a couple of starts ago where he raced over the 1,000. Harmony Fire, Heroic Master and Happy United also come out of this race 6.08. Yeah, I think Heroic Master will get the race run to suit with all the pace in it. Uh, Youthful Spirits, now, he just went too quick last time um, over, the, over that uh, 1,200. Back to 1,000 looks better for him. And he was just uh, knocked off late here. So, look, the horse is going well at the moment, um, Youthful Spirits. I think he'll get his opportunity, so he'll go in the numbers for me. He's in. Midori Glory couldn't have done any more than what he did at his first Hong Kong start. He was victorious. He knocked off the favourite Beauty Waves. Fast serve is above average. Youthful Spirits, Heroic Master and Atomic Force also appear here. Yeah, so forget Youthful Spirits. He was wide here. But, look, he got the perfect run, Midori Glory. He was entitled to win, and he did. I think he's coming on a competitive rating here in to Hong Kong. He's drawn barrier six, so he just goes out slightly. But with all the pace in the race, he should get a really good run once again. Fast serve will come on for this run, so they both go in for me. Humble Star had some interest in the race. Big weight on his back, but good record when it comes to the 1,000 metres and also this grade. He yeah, likes it in this grade as well. He's a uh, three-time winner in this class. He's drawn nicely in barrier number one. It's just a quite, he's just got to give away a bit of weight to some nice horses in this race. So that was just a little problem I had with him. But he finished off the race strongly enough and you wouldn't be surprised if he ran into the money. And he's going to be ridden by Alexi. But El Pierre Ong draws beautifully in one. He was a winner in Class 3 back on the 29th of November, beating Grateful Heart as his most recent victory. Uh, that's it.
Who do you like? I like Midori Glory, and this. I think he can go back to back and win once again. He's drawn uh, six. I think he'd get a nice run. Magic Control uh, looks above average. He's had the four trials, thousand and fifty-three pounds. Youthful Spirits will be ridden a little bit more conservatively, I think, in this race. And Fast Serve will come on from that last run. Five two nine four. Paul with the Great White Blaze to make it two for two in Hong Kong. Race number nine, the Chamomile Handicap, and there's a scratching here of Big Red. Sweet Briar comes in and Harry Bentley takes the ride. We've got uh, Red Hair King, a better draw at the top of the book. Ivy League plus six pounds for his last start third, never too soon back from the 1,400 metres. Beauty Infinity has the pacifiers off. A satirical fan, last start winner class four. Winning data placed his only time over the 1650, ended Happy Valley. And Sweet Briar down the bottom comes in to carry 126 pounds. A good field here, Paul. It is. Look, satirical fan uh, led all the way last time. Beauty Infinity's come up from 1200 to 1650, so I think he'll be quite forward. Winning data will need some luck. Uh, he's drawn a bit wide, but there is a big run to that first turn, so he'll be trying to slot in there somewhere. He might even try and even go on with it if he can. It's just a matter of where he can slot in. Sweet Briar, Red Hair King was in front last time, but I think he'll take a sit. Star Contact's another one that's gone forward in the past. Just on Star Contact, David Hayes, his trainer, and he spoke to Nick. David, Star Contact, um, a regular uh, around these parts when it comes to racing at Happy Valley. Another really solid run last time. Short headed behind Lavero, probably the shortest of short heads we're going to see all season, I reckon. Yeah, some people thought he won. Um, but uh, look, he backed up from a really good run at Sha Tin, just got beaten, and and so his form's very good and he seems to be holding his form so I expect a good solid run. A typical of a horse like him that is very consistent obviously the handicap just keeps nudging them up a pound he's now up to, to 69 rated that's a career high uh, do you think he can win off this mark or I mean obviously you'd hope he can but I guess it does get that bit tougher for him doesn't it? Well the handicapper thinks so he put him up so uh, I suppose you know if you're consistent off a couple pounds lighter there's every chance you will handle it, and he's a big, strong horse. Uh, I'd say when he draws a good barrier in this class, he can always run well. Yeah, which he certainly has here in four. You sent him up to Chung Far as well. He's had a, a trial there just to tick him over. Happy with that? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, you weren't set out to break any records. It was just for a bit of fitness because he was a bit of time between runs. Karras obviously knows him quite well. I mean, uh, he's a great guy to have on, isn't he, really, when it comes to a horse like him. He just probably needs that little extra lift. Yeah, look, Karras... Um, We've had a great season with Karras, so um, let's hope it continues. You certainly have. Um, talking of, of great seasons, one horse who's, who's taken his time to, to sort of get to that level of, of greatness, shall we say, is old Ariel. Finally got that win at the weekend. Um, certainly pleased us as broadcasters. You must have been happy to finally achieve it. It really was. And look, he, he, he's been found wanting at 1,400. And, and because of the more relaxed tempo, at a mile, he sort of enjoyed it and gave a kick, and I think he beat a very good young horse, so um, a good effort. It certainly was. Um, and just finally, how has Kaying Rising come out of his Group 3 when obviously a little, little bit of water's now gone under the bridge, and how, how has he taken that win? Yeah, look, he pulled up. You could have ran him again. Um, you could have ran him this week, but um, we're just giving him holidays. Only three, he's had seven runs, nearly a perfect season, and we'll have him ready for the first meeting uh, that... that the, um, the big cup race on the first meeting on the new track, which will be good. Yeah, certainly will be. Um, and you only need the four to get to that magic 50, so um, that's looking more than likely, isn't it? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'll be thrilled to get 50, because I've had 48 horses for most of the year, so uh, well, I'm a chance, I think. There is David Hayes. We've got a few to look at in this uh, replay pool with Sweetbriar adding to the field. Red Hair King ends up running second. He's just racing so well. Does have to carry top weight, but a great draw. Yeah, he has. So I think he can sit just in behind the pace. He was a bit of a sitting duck here, Red Hair King, and um, as such, he did, get, he did get beaten. So I thought Sweetbriar had every chance. He was on his outside, but he, he's got a nice draw once again. So, again, he's going to be right up there. Uh, both these two uh, horses go on, but I think Red Hair King, with a little bit of cover, can probably overturn the tables here 
and be tough to beat in this race. A romantic Lau goes up nine pounds for that win too, so it's a big weight swing to Red Hair King. Uh, these two, Paul, we've got uh, Never Too Soon running second and Beauty Infinity fourth. Never Too Soon just bobs up from time to time and roars home lace. Yeah, he does. So he's another one that needs a bit of luck in his races. Uh, if he gets the right, the right tempo, he's a chance. Beauty Infinity, I'm just not sure about him We're up to the 1650. He is by Toronado, so uh, look, the, the breeding's there to suggest he can get the 1650, but I just want to just want to see what he can do um, in this uh, in this race. But yeah, both these two horses running okay, and it's a strong form race because co-partner Prance came out on one on the weekend. He did too in a good field at Sha Tin. One of your faves this season has been winning data, never too soon. This is what he can do here running on for second. The 1650 won't worry him because he's beaten all but one home at his only look at the trip at the Valley. He's your old fave in this week. Yeah, he was a big price that day and the blinkers had gone on him for the first time. And ever since the blinkers have gone on this horse, he's, a, he's been a new horse and he keeps winning. He's drawn awkwardly. That's the only query. I would have put him on top if he had a good draw. But because he's drawn awkwardly, I've just uh, relegated him in there down, down a place. But he's, he's very honest and he'll run a good race for you. And there he is. That's never too soon in the purple flying home to run second. Who wins the last? Well, I went with Red Hair King on the uh, on top in the end. Uh, I just think he's going to be in the right place. Winning data, we just talked about second. Sweet Briar's had his chances, but uh, he's going to be, again be in the right place. He'll get his opportunity once again. And Romantic Lau was the last start winner. one ten twelve four. That has been the Race by Race preview for Wednesday night at Happy Valley. Nine races for meeting 80 of the season on the B course. And the gates open for the first at 6.40.